uh, lab outsource. I don't have a whole lot to report there. We're still kind of status quo uh, waiting. We, we have submitted our complaint to TDI. They told us it would take about a month for that to. So first to second week of April, we should hear something back from TDI on that. <coughs> but we submitted our part. They submitted uh, questions to Blue Cross in response to that. And when they get those, they will get that back with it. They give them 15 days. Uh, they'll get that back and make their assessment on that. And we should be hearing something. My guess will be the first or second week of April. So that's still moving forward. So uh, kind of along that same note with Blue Cross, there were two Senate bills that are, one of them is basically just kind of clarifying the lab outreach and, and how it's supposed to function properly legally when you do all the testing in-house uh, that bill and then the second bill is a bill that would allow basically all torch hospitals texas rural hospitals to collectively negotiate a set agreement with the insurance companies commercial insurance payers it would allow them to team up this uh, a torch currently has i think 160 at one time it was 78 we lost a few we're down to 160 rural hospitals but it would allow them to combine and negotiate a single contract for all the hospitals. Uh, that is to be heard in committee next Tuesday. So it's made it onto the floor and, and we're, so we'll see what that uh, will bring as that moves forward. I think that will, if that's able to pass, that will give us rural hospitals a little bit of leverage when it comes to commercial insurance companies and being able to, being able to get fair rates uh, accordingly. Is there anyone from our area on any of the committees that are being that are here yet? Not, not so much our, but I, I do know that Representative Frank is uh, on in Knox's region, and he is the one that is, is carrying that bill. And uh, Perry, as well, has signed on to it. So and we have informed both Birdwell <laughs> And Sheffield, that it is, it had kind of brought them up to date, and they are aware that it is, it is going there. So, and I, or time, time spent in Austin, we did. At that time, it hadn't been presented yet, so we didn't actually have a bill number, but now there's actually a bill number out there. So, there, MMP does have a lobbyist that's out working at the Capitol to, uh, to make sure everybody's aware of that. And there are some other people that we, Lucio was another one that we met with, who's chair of the insurance committee. So we kind of brought them up to speed on how that would help rural hospitals and what it would allow us to do. So. Had that bill already been passed, how would that change our interaction, our current interaction with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield? Would it have had any effect on it? it? It would have an effect in the sense that right now we're a single rural hospital that Blue Cross Blue Shield <coughs> could function fine without. So there's not a whole lot of reasoning for them to to give us better pricing. I mean, they, they could, you know, there's other hospitals within fairly close driving range, so you know, if we were out of network, it really wouldn't bother them. And you take all the West Texas rural hospitals and you take them out of network for Blue Cross, then they lose a huge, you know, a huge amount of business. Also, if the hospital's out of network, most likely the uh, employers in those counties aren't going to carry Blue Cross as their, their insurance on their employees. So we're up to renewal right now. That's a big question. We're asking them to go out to market
70 hospitals, then it's not so much job change anymore. Yeah. It, comes to, yeah. it, it kind of puts us up with the, the big boys and being able to, to negotiate and do a few out of the hospitals. Well, there's a political issue for Blue Cross Blue Shield if they want to continue to, if they don't care about the small rural hospital, it costs the state of Texas more in the long run. Because those hospitals still have to be supported, and if commercial insurance pulls out, then you have a lot of unfunded care, which comes back to the state at some point. Or you have hospitals that close. Yeah. Well, in our case, you, you know, think about it much, but I, the 73% cut that we were initially proposed on our Blue Cross contract, it, that's held true. Uh, you would got to think at some point the tax rate would probably be increased to offset, so it's basically putting the burden back on the community to keep hospitals open. And, and we're not the only one that are doing that too. I mean, it's basically all rural hospitals that we, I know Torch did a survey of rural hospitals that 50% of them <coughs> have received the new contract or contract negotiations. And for the most part, all of them are similar to us. Uh, we know those numbers, but they, they were on a scale of one to five, it's at a, a difficulty in dealing with and how bad the contract was. It's up like a 4.65 out of five being the worst. So. So we're not the only ones. It's not, it has really, some of it they say is due to the lab, it, the lab outsource, these are hospitals that do not do lab outsource. It's not pertaining to that. They're targeting all of the hospitals. So, well, so that's- there's somebody out there really fighting for us uh, And that's what we, and, and going to the Capitol, there was some, at least rural Texas, there were some appreciative of rural Texas and, and kind of what they've done in recent elections. Texas has, has kept the demographic in, and they were supportive of that. So, in rural hospitals, are, I mean, they're understanding there is a crisis in rural health care today. And hospitals, Texas has leads in the, the United States in the most hospitals that are shut down. So, uh, we have the largest number at this point. Another statistics we heard, uh, heard, I did not realize we were like number 48 in Medicaid reimbursement. Louisiana is way above us, several other of the surrounding. There are some bills that are out there that would that are be heard this year that would potentially help with that. It would actually bring the Medicaid reimbursement up to market. I mean, we're being paid on prices from 2010, and you know we get two to three percent, sometimes five percent price increases a year that in our cost, but those haven't been carried along to the reimbursement that's, that's out there for Medicaid. So there's actually a 60 million dollar package that's looking to bring that up and actually make it stay current moving forward with inflation and things like that. Uh, another one you might be aware of, I don't know if Grace spoke about it last, last meeting, but there's a Senate bill out there right now that would actually limit, and it's, it's got push from the governor and lieutenant governor, but it would actually limit the amount we could raise our tax rate to 2%. Who knows what it's going to look like when it finally makes its way out. But, I mean, right now we're at 8%. <coughs> For us, that's of some interest to keep an eye on because of the, the fluidity of the nuclear power plant. And if they drop the value of the plant, you know, there's no way we can come anywhere near trying to recoup when they, with what's gone on in the past, if they come in with an extremely low rate, you can't, you can't raise the tax rate enough to recoup from that. I mean, you're kind of stuck. As long as they don't take away the effective tax right rule. Well, if your rollback goes above your effective, that we did that once in the past, you can't, it's it's either or, as I understand. Because I think the year that they dropped it so much, we couldn't even get back up to our effective tax rate without going to rollback. So that's one of the concerns. There is some, was early on some provisions in there to allow entities that tax less than 15 million to be exempt and they kind of played, those have gone on and been taken off and put back on and there's been some modifications of that, but that was one of the things that we were kind of hoping is that we could, <coughs> they would put some exemption in there that would allow rural hospitals to be exempt. The big the big thing is school, is school reform, and that's what it's aiming to, the whole bill and the whole, you know, is aiming to, is aimed at, but, you know, rural hospitals just happen to be caught up in the, in the crossfire. Just something to keep a 
keep an eye on that's going through while we're in session is to be interested to see how it will go down. We, I mean, from everybody we talk to, there's no doubt that eight percent is going to be less. As to whether or not it's going to affect us and to what percentage it's going to land on, but it is going to change. That is, so, you know, affect the county and the water district and everybody else as well. So. Uh, on the Blue Cross contract, billing issue, nothing's changed. It's still kind of kind of status quo. Contract, we've submitted our counter to Blue Cross, and uh, I'm hearing a little bit of chatter today, but haven't actually gotten any hard numbers and anything really ironed out of what their counter proposal is, but I would be expecting probably a counter proposal in the next couple of days. Uh, I'm not going to get, we wouldn't get our hopes up 